to the little tail twitching, and all of a sudden he makes a move to the prey when it gets in range. I like that analogy for the hitter. I like the body relatively still except relaxed and the little tail twitch like the Stan Musial tail twitch. I like movement in my hitters, very subtle movement within, just within the, the, the base without losing balance. But I do not like inward rotation or inward movement of the front knee or front shoulder. I think it creates massive problems we can't overcome later. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Coach. I have another question that's called in earlier, Gary. Do the power collectors and pressure points unlock in sequence? Now let me stand up to do this because I'll, I'll need to go back into that a little bit and I'll move over to our area and take a look at it. I think that's an intriguing question because I, this is something new to people around the country and very few people have broken the hitting system down and for the first time that you hear it, uh, the information can be so much it can overwhelm you. But we talked about power collector number one and power collector number two and power collector number three, the Y of the top hand. Uh, do they unlock in sequence? Well, yes, basically we're going to move to the ball as a hitter. We're going to move to the ball off of our stride, power base action, back knee trigger, belly button to the ball, and back elbow moving into the slot. So it moves first, and this lead number two power accumulator stays very cocked until the last possible moment. We feel like that number two and three work simultaneously. Now, if we could achieve that, I'm telling you that's remarkable. It's one of the real fine points with an advanced hitter. What we don't want is the top hand to take over before two works. Can we simplify it that way? We want one to move into the slot. We want two to work at least at the same time as three. What we don't want to do is we don't want one to work. We don't want one to work. I'm sorry. Miss, we have to go back and pick that up. I may have confused you. We don't want the top hand, number three, to work first. We don't want number three to work first. We want number one, back elbow, in the slot. Number two, lead wrist to stay cocked. And then two, lead wrist and three, top hand, can explode the bat together. You actually, when you hit the ball the other way, the lead wrist can do all the work. And we have drills strictly for lead wrist. Strictly lead wrist. We have drills strictly for top hand. And we're working on power collector number one here, power collector number two here. We put the hands together. Obviously, we're concerned about sequence. And yes, they move into the master accumulator number four. In our drill segment today, we'll try to show you a couple of ways of helping that as well. A certain sequence, but more importantly, one, got to be early, two, three can be together, and four has to take over the master load to complete the stroke. Thanks, Coach. Coach, we have another live call. Hello? Yes, I'm calling from Camden, Missouri, the home of the Lakers. and. Uh, we were talking about his, your uh, power base, and we'd like to know which, like an open, open stance or closed stance, or wh which you feel is best. Thanks. That's a good question. Uh, we'll do a little work later on it, but I can respond at this time. Uh, you're basically dealing with uh, body type. You take a look at, uh, let's think about two different guys. Let me think. Uh, Don Mattingly, pretty slim hip type guy, very quick in his legs. Uh, Think about a big, strong guy, uh, you know, like a Bob Watson or a guy that's a 230-pound Jim Rice. Uh, Rice is real uh, fundamentally sound for, for a big leg hitter. He's really a quality hitter, but he is not real quick in his legs and his uh, power base, and he's a keto. His a keto is not real quick. And he might be more prone to have to open up a little bit. In other words, if, relative to the speed of your hips, relative to the speed of your second and third gear action, how quick can I be with my power base and my back knee trigger? Heavy hip guys, I may open them up. If I'm a little quicker in my legs like Mattingly, I can close off and be more successful. Now you have to realize as well that you're dealing with a situation where we're talking about the onside hitter, meaning I'm a right-handed hitter and I must face right-handed pitching and play every day, or I'm a left-handed hitter and I must face left-handed pitching and play every day. If I'm a switch hitter, I can close my stance off and never have to work with gears two or three sometimes very much. I can just step and throw the bat at the ball. But we're talking about onside hitting. We're assuming that everybody wants to play every day and uh, handle all kinds of pitching. And so I'll take the guy relative to the quickness in his hips and adjust his leg action to help him if he needs to, to cheat a little bit to the ball. Thanks for the question. This is an interesting question, Coach. Uh, Maybe I'll make a comeback if you can explain this well. <laughs> How do you adjust your swing to hit the curveball? 
Well, it, that's a good question. I'll tell you, uh, we're in a situation where people are startled and have been when I say for 15 years, I said, you don't hit the curveball. You take it. So what are you talking about, coach? I said, you take it. And in order to explain this question, I've got to move back out here on the studio for you. We talked rhythm adjustment, correct? I'm set up. I'm going to take a stride. Nolan Ryan's pitching. He's going to come up, and the hand's going to be right here. And I'm going to take my stride, and I'm going to move to a power base, and I'm going to collect information on release. And halfway to the plate, I've got 20 hundredths of a second to say, yes, strike, bang. And he throws a curveball. Woo. I got to take it. And that's what sequential unlocking allows me to do. If I take the pitch in my legs, I'm a power base hitter. If I take it in my hands, which I normally won't, if I just stride and go right to my hands, curveball out on my front foot, hands are already gone, I've struck out on a breaking ball. We're in a situation where if it's a fastball, I can react to it. If it's a breaking ball, I should be able to take it. That's what my information time is for. Stride, coacher. Bang, Nolan throws it. Bang right here. It's a curveball. Take it, take it, take it, take it right here. It's in my legs, still vertically stacked, still have control. So realistically, you don't teach people on side hitters to hit the breaking ball. You teach them to take it. Now, there's a difference between the slider and the curveball. The slider is a situation where when it's almost a fastball. Let's say that when we teach our pitchers to pitch, we'd like for them to all throw 88. We'd like for their slider to be 80. We'd like for the curveball to be 74. And we'd like for their straight change to be 68. Because the way you get hitters out is you change plane and you change rhythm. The way you hit pitchers is that you have an ability to adjust to change a plane and to a change of rhythm. At this particular point, curveball coming. I want to be able to take the curveball because information told me that, and I could see spin, and I'm moving in my legs, controlling the bat in the first two phases of sequential unlocking, gears one and two. Take the pitch. Well, they say, Coach, uh, what if he throws two or three curveballs for strikes? Well, I'm still going to be dealing with rhythm adjustment. And the only timing that I can deal with is the fastball. I can't time both the fastball and the curveball. So I have to make a selection. So primarily, until I get two strikes, I'm going to be in flash fastball rhythm. Now, how simple it becomes when I get two strikes, then I have to adjust my rhythm. I have to concede to the fastball, tighten my rhythm, see the ball longer, have greater information time, and that will allow me to hit the ball the other way, which is the way I want to hit the curveball, and or a straight change, or something off speed. So as I get behind the count, and I get into the count, I'm going to have that seed where I want it, hopefully, is a breaking ball or a change, and I'll handle it. If he throws the fastball, I'll fight it off, because I'm a tighter rhythm. Now let's think about this. We're sitting in a situation where I've got two strikes on me. He's sewn two buzzing sliders on the black. I've taken them because I'm looking on fastball rhythm. And I didn't get a pitch. And I'm telling you, the curveball is about a 40% completion rate in striking ball. And if he saw me two curveball strikes, I've got to concede. I've got to tighten the rhythm up, tighten the rhythm up, move to the baseball, and concede to the fastball. I may see Nolan Ryan's fastball where I started here on a fastball. I may have to wait until I see his fastball and just fight the fastball off. Just fight the fastball off. With two strikes, I just tighten the rhythm. So we don't really hit the curveball. We adjust to it and we work in it later in the count. And then a switch hitter or an offside hitter can be a breaking ball hitting specialist. Switch hitters are taught to hit the fastball the other way so that they're working in a breaking ball rhythm or what we call a tight rhythm all the time. Thanks, Coach. Coach, we just have a couple of minutes before uh, we take a break, but one more question. You emphasize taking a short stroke. If I take a short stroke, am I gonna lose some of my power? Well, I think that's what scares kids is that they feel strong from the time they're a little kid they put that bat in their hands, and this is where they feel all their strength. As they work on the jump rope, and we have our, all of our lifting program and weight training is geared toward the upper legs and low back. I want to build a guy linebacker strong. I don't want to have to deal with his shoulders so much. I want to build him linebacker strong from his hips up. And we're going to get a bat speed that's going to create power, shortness, and quickness of stroke. We want to see how good we can hit the ball, not how far. And natural power emanates it comes from down here either you have natural power with a good short quick stroke or you're a guy who has to swing the bat extra hard and you're going to strike out a lot and we don't have guys who strike out an awful lot we want good solid contact hitters when we hit it with a power base it'll go out 